describe as coming off a truck if the speeds were 50 miles an hour, the pipe would be traveling. And welcome back to the Long Crime Network. I'm your host, Amy Dash, here with Michael Bryant. And we were just listening to expert testimony from an emergency physician, but in the Ted, Todd, I keep calling him Ted. <laughs> I'm thinking teddy bears because it's like yes. holiday season. <laughs> And I'm passing Penn Station, and they have the Salvation Army out there doing the song and dance with okay, the teddy bears. Okay, that's a very detailed analysis. Of <laughs> so, so the Todd Kent Hammer trial. Let's put that aside for a second because there is big news that the FCC, in a vote today, has approved a measure to remove net neutrality rules. What does that mean? Sounds oh really gosh. complicated, yes. but actually affects everybody in their daily use of the Internet. It really does. You know, the FCC has been around forever. I think it was 1934. The act was uh, uh, passed to create the, and they dealt with radio then and then TV. Well, now the Internet is kind of not really what they were ever intended to do. So these net neutrality, Internet neut neutrality rules, as I understand the way it used to be, was there was some even playing field for internet service providers. They couldn't really favor, let's say, folks they were uh, hooked up with in a business relationship. They couldn't really control content, per se. They couldn't control throttling, speed. Yeah, that's the way it's always been. But I mean, when I'm searching the internet, I can really go anywhere, anytime, at any speed, pretty much. But now, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, theoretically, what they've done is removed any of those restrictions, and so internet providers can start to, maybe if they're uh, hooked up with a, a, a big uh, retail operation, mm -hmm. they can somehow funnel that information to you uh, over somebody else's competing product. Uh, or so they'll slow you down yeah. for some content that doesn't favor that provider as well as another. So now, instead of just those pop-ups that we see when I'm trying to read an article and I'm, I'm seeing like a sweater that I was looking at three weeks ago. It's scary. Isn't <laughs> because that scary? I'm, yeah, it's like yeah. pinpoint advertising. Now, the entire internet can just become one big advertisement for these service providers because you're saying that they can favor their relationships and their economic profit. They can favor that in what I'm searching. They right, can if they influence have an affiliation. What I see. And now, as, as things are getting more and more congealed, you know, you've got big companies buying other, you know, Disney just buying Fox. I mean, you've got all of this coming your way. So pretty soon, is it a monopoly that that's just going to jam their wondering. affiliated products down your throat? Yeah, because you've got Comcast, NBC Universal. I mean, everybody's merging. And so now it seems like it's a war with which big mogul is going to become, you know, the dominant voice on the Internet. Yeah, so we'll have to see how it shakes out uh, to, to see if self-policing works mm -hmm. or if there's some need for kind of a touch-up on the regulation. What bothers me is that now I'm going to have to pay potentially in the future if I want to see certain sites that aren't affiliated with the person providing my Internet. That could be, and then you have to, it's almost like a menu system where you'd have to, to pick a series of content providers that are with a certain Internet provider. Yeah, and it's controversial because obviously a lot of things have gone um, well and have developed from this free market idea where you could blog and anyone could see your blogs, right? Um, they were talking about Netflix and that if these providers had controlled streaming, live streaming, only with people that they operated with, we wouldn't have seen Netflix become the company that right. it has become. Right. And then I was talking to you about some of those uh, coups in foreign countries, you know, different um, democratic operations that were organized by the people because of things they had seen the access, on the Internet. Right, the access was there. So now yeah. the question is, is that access going to be controlled for somebody's, you know, evil doing or, or commercial means? Yeah, by a Verizon, by an NBC, by these big players. Yeah. Now, lastly, on this topic... The FCC, as part of the vote today, also removed net neutrality, basically, from its domain, saying that they don't even want to rule on it in the future. They can't even put the rules that they had in the past back in the future. Why would they take away their own power? I, I get the feeling that, that it's almost as if the commission said, We're not, we never signed on for this. This <laughs> is far beyond what was ever intended by the Act of 1934. Uh, this is not radio, this is not TV, this is far larger, and maybe the legislature as a whole should handle this kind of stuff. Don't leave it to our little commission. Yeah, and, ma and maybe they were being lobbied oh, I'm on sure the that. side. I'm sure of that. Yeah, because why all of a sudden would the rules that are two years old uh, be removed? But do you think this raises, raises the broader question that maybe we need a commission that deals just with the Internet? Well, that's not a bad idea. I mean, if the FCC 
is no longer necessary for that element of what we now communicate with, which has got to be the dominant form of communication these days, then maybe you do need a specialized group. And maybe that's what they're setting up. Yeah, it's really interesting. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah. me. I know I kind of threw that topic yes, on the table the at the last <laughs> minute, but you handled it lovely. Oh, thank you. Nice thank to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you, too. And we will continue our verdict watch for the Todd Kendhammer trial. But in the meantime, let's